If you're planning a visit to Super Nintendo World soon, you might be wondering, do you actually need to spend the cash on one of these power-up bands? These flexible, wearable pieces of tech allow you to interact with many of the features and elements within Super Nintendo World. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about Nintendo's power-up band before you go. The first thing that you should know about power-up bands is why they were created. Nintendo really wanted guests of Super Nintendo World to feel like they were playing a real-life video game, so if you hit one of the question mark blocks, you could collect coins. There are even boss battles in Super Nintendo World, but I'll get to that later. Okay, so now you might be wondering, like, how do you buy a power-up band and how much do they cost? So to answer this, I go inside the One Up Factory store. This is in Super Nintendo World. It sells a wide variety of merchandise here, all well-themed to the land. It's also the store that you walk through after completing the Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge ride. Power-up bands cost about 40 bucks plus tax. As you can see, there are six different power-up band types, each with their own character design to fit your personality. Now, I had to buy mine behind the register, but you can also purchase your bands at kiosks inside Super Nintendo World. They'll also be available to purchase at stores around Universal Studios Hollywood. So these flexible bands are really soft. They feel like silicon. They work like slap bracelets, so you just pop them right on your arm. They do feel a bit hefty, but I think that actually makes them feel more expensive. With the power-up band on, you can smash blocks and collect coins. You'll pair your power-up band with the Universal Studios Hollywood app by scanning the QR code on the back of your band. It's pretty straightforward, but after you sync your band, you can walk around the land and find different items to interact with. While the coins you collect are not redeemable for physical items, depending on the character you chose, your points will tally together with other players on scoreboards within the app and throughout the land. Now, one of the best parts is the boss story. There's a golden mushroom within the kingdom that Bowser Jr. has stolen, and your job is to complete different tasks around the land and defeat bosses in order to battle Bowser Jr. You'll score these digital key coins within the app, and once you've collected three, then you can take on Bowser Jr. What I love about these games is that Universal could have added some out-of-the-box family-friendly attractions, but instead they allow us to become a friend of the Mario Brothers and interact just like they would within their video games. In this one, I had to make sure that all of the question mark box were flipped, and once I did, I was able to collect one of the digital keys with my band to later take on Bowser Jr. Now, there are only a handful of interactive activities to collect one of these key coins, but like I said, you only need to get three in order to battle Bowser Jr. And his level is by far the most interactive. So I was able to collect all three key coins, and I made my way over to Bowser Jr.'s lair, which is right next to the Mario Kart ride. I tried to get in before them, but they told me no, I had to collect all three coins, and then I was able to step inside and Bowser Jr., you're going down now. So in this demo, you'll see exactly how the game works. Using your projected shadow, you can move your body around to fling bombs at Bowser Jr. and duck to avoid bullets. And if you get hit, you will shrink and have to get a mushroom to grow back up. You can also get power-ups like fire flowers in order to not only grow big, but also shoot fire. Up to 12 players can take on Bowser Jr. at a time, and once successful, you'll get a heartwarming message from Peach just like in the games. Overall, the boss battle experience was incredibly rewarding and definitely my favorite part of having a power-up band. In addition, the Mario Kart attraction also works with the bands. You just tap your band on the steering wheel and all the coins you collect will also get tallied. So for those of us who love competition in video games, the power-up band adds a whole other level of competitive gameplay. But Nintendo and Universal thought of everything that players love, including Easter eggs. There are four different classic 8-bit characters hidden around Super Nintendo World. You just have to find the hidden M touchpads around the land, or you can check the map. But before I show you more pros and some cons of the power-up bands, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I give all kinds of tips for visiting Southern California theme parks, including Universal Studios Hollywood and Disneyland. With that said, having a power-up band gave an entirely new dimension of gameplay in Super Nintendo World. Not only were completing the tasks easy and fun to do, but I also spent a couple of really fun hours doing them. And you can reuse your power-up band each time you come back. But a con is that sometimes the power-up bands don't always stay on your wrist. In fact, I saw them fly off people's wrists during some of the interactive games. There's also a question of whether theme park experiences should have an additional paywall on top of the tickets. After all, a family of four is going to spend 160 bucks plus tax to have a band each. But of course, Super Nintendo World doesn't require you to use a power band in order to experience the land. And if you have a Nintendo Switch at home, you can use your power up band as an amiibo and unlock certain things within games like Mario Kart 8. But I'm curious to know, which power up bands would everybody decide to get? Would you get Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Peach, Toad, or Daisy? Leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.